the average rate of change is going to be determined by the change in f of x divided by the change in x. So here we have a graph of some speed changing over time. I have two points here. At time 4, I have a point specified, and at time 6, I have a point specified. So what I want to figure out is between this period, between 4 and 6, what is my average change in terms of speed? So to do this, I need to consider the fact that, well, I'm using t for this one, that we have a change in time, and in that change of time, we're changing in speed, and we'll call this s of t for the speed relative to time. So how I can figure this out is by taking a look at the total change during that time period and divide it by how much time it took. And that'll give me the average change of speed. So to do this, there's a little formula that we can use here. We can use s, and I'm going to label these here. So s of t final, so this is the final time that we're looking for, minus s of t initial, so this would just be the first time period we're looking at, and we're going to divide that by the final time minus the initial time. So you can do this with uh, f of x instead of s of t, it's going to work out the same. So in this case, let's get some values for these. So here at t equals 4, uh, we're about at 15, and at t equals 6, s of t is about, uh, let's say, 48 to make this more interesting. So we can just plug in our final values here. This point right here is going to be our function at t final, because it's the, the rightmost point here. And our leftmost point is going to be s of t initial. So in other words, in our time, we're picking the initial time to be 4, and we're picking the final time to be 6. This is just for this example, but these times could be changing depending on your question. So to substitute this into our formula, at our final time, we're going to be at 48. And let's just say this is uh, meters per second. We're going to subtract 15 meters per second because that's our initial time and the times that we're evaluating are going to be well six is our end point four is our beginning point so if we calculate this we're going to end up getting 33 divided by 2 and this is just going to be a change of 16.5 meters per second so that is the average rate of change now, at certain points within this, we might have different speeds, but overall, if we just take a look at the initial point and the end point, we're changing on average about 16.5 meters per second. So let's take a look at a couple example problems, and this time we won't see graphs, but we'll just see functions instead. So what is the average rate of change for f of x is equal to 3x minus 2 between x equals 3 and x equals 5? So x equals 3 is going to be our initial point, and x equals 5 is going to be our final point. So to calculate the average rate of change, we're going to take f of our final point, subtract f of our initial point, and we'll divide this by the final point minus our initial point. So f of 5 minus f of 3 over 5 minus 3. If we plug some values in here, what we're going to get for f of 5 is going to be 3 times 5 minus 2. So that's f of 5. And then we're going to be subtracting f of 3, which would be 3 times 3 minus 2. So here all I'm doing is I'm putting in that number where all of the x's are in our original equation. And then we're going to divide this by 5 minus 3, since that's the time that we're looking at. So if we multiply this out, 3 times 5 minus 2 will be 13. And we're going to subtract 9 minus 2, which is 7. And we're dividing this by 2. So this is going to be 6 over 2, which means our average rate of change is going to be 3. Now, this is a function. There's no units to specify, so we don't need to specify any units. Now, one of the interesting things that you can see here, which 
can be helpful for linear functions is that this number here simply corresponds to the coefficient of x. So whenever you have a formula like mx plus b, the average rate of change over a time period is usually just m, and you should verify this for yourself with several different problems. It's still good to show all your work and do all the little tricks here with multiplication, division, all that stuff, but that's a little hint for how things can work. So the second question says, what is the average rate of change for f of x equals one minus three x squared between x equals two and x equals two plus h? Okay. So this one is a little bit more difficult because we have a variable. We're not going to get a number in the end. But we can specify our initial and final values. So in this, we're going to take f of 2 plus h, subtract f of 2, and then divide this by 2 plus h minus 2. So we do have some variables in there, but that's okay. The process is going to be exactly the same. So for f of 2 plus h, whenever we see x, we're going to replace it with 2 plus h. So we're going to get 1 minus 3 times 2 plus h, and that'll be squared. And then we're going to subtract f of 2, which will just be 1 minus 3 times 2 squared. And then we're going to divide this by 2 plus h minus 2. The 2s will cancel, and then we'll be left with h on the bottom. So now we can start expanding things and simplifying things. So I'll use the same colors here. So 1 minus 3 times, and then we need to do 2 plus h squared. So we're going to get 2 times 2, which is 4. We're going to get... 2 times h, which is 2h. We're going to get another 2 times h, which is 2h. And we're going to get h times h, which is h squared. So that's going to be our f of 2 plus h expanded. And we're going to be subtracting 1 minus 3 times 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4. 3 times 2, or sorry, 3 times 4 is 12. So 1 minus 12 is negative 11. And we're dividing this by h. Okay, so we can keep going at this point. Uh, we can do some simplification here. So in the first one, we're going to get 1 minus uh, 3 times 4, it's going to be 12. 2h plus 2h is 4h, so minus 3 times 4h is going to be minus 12h, and we're subtracting 3h squared. And then we're going to be subtracting negative 11 from that, which is the same thing as adding 11, and we're dividing this by h. Okay, just a little bit more to simplify at this point. So what we're going to get is 1 minus 12, which is negative 11, plus 11. So all of our numbers are going to cancel out. So we have like a zero there. And then we're going to have negative 12h left minus 3h squared divided by h. This is very nice because now we can do some cancellation. So we'll divide everything by h. So we're going to get negative 12 minus 3h. So our average rate of change for this function is negative 12 minus 3h. So we do have a variable in there, but that's fine. That should be expected because in our original question, our final time had a variable in there. But what this means is that then we can stick in values for h and we can get our solution for the average rate. So if the average is negative 12 minus 3h, then what we can do is if we're asking what is it between x equals 2 and x equals 4, well, x equals 4 it's the same thing as 2 plus 2. So we can take this 2 here and we can substitute it in for h. So we get negative 12 minus 3 times 2, which would be negative 12 minus 6, which would be negative 18. So uh, this is what the variables are used for. It's just for making future 
questions a little bit simpler if you choose to take that route. But anyways, that was Average Rate of Change. I hope it helped. You know what to do if you have questions, and thanks for watching.